Loretto, once the capital of the Californias, now a popular tourist destination, this charming colonial city has no shortage of fantastic food, crystal clear water, and history for exploring. We're Liz and Dennis, and this week we're figuring out RV life in Loretto, Baja, California, sir. Definitely got a problem. Subscribe to join us for the tasty and wild ride and see what makes this Pueblo Mágico worth visiting. I am so ready for this. After spending five, six nights boondocking out in the beach and cooking all of our meals, I'm happy to be back in a city. And this spot looks amazing. I was craving a Don Pancho's burrito from San Diego, but since we are not in San Diego, we cannot get that. So we came to Super Burro. It's had very good reviews online. I asked the waitress what she recommended because they have a, a bunch of different types of meat that you can get in the burritos. And she said, absolutely, you have to get the arachera, which is flank steak. So that's what I got. Dennis got something that is like a fajita where he gets to kind of build his own with handmade corn tortillas or flour tortillas. It's like, I'm so hungry and excited. Biggest burrito I think I've ever seen. Mm. Good. Mm. Mm. Winner. Very good. This is exactly what I was craving. So cheesy and good. They're definitely very similar to fajitas. Like it gives you that fajita feel. But the way they do their flank steak here is banging. Wow. They got it dialed. Yeah. But I did. <laughs> but you did it. Uh, Good morning. Good morning. How was sleeping on the street? Well, not bad. Last night was wild. <laughs> we got to Laredo way too late. We were running errands, got burritos. By the time we tried to get to an RV park, it was like 8.30 p.m. Yeah, we, we definitely tried to find a camp spot too late. I guess we should have done that first thing, but I don't know if it would have changed it. Like all three of the RV parks in Loretto were completely full. And we've never had that happen in any of our other Mexican adventures. Like we always had space. 11 months, 21 states in mainland Mexico, never. So we ended up finding a spot on I Overlander on the street. Right next to the Malecon, right on the bay. I'm not gonna lie, it was a sweet little spot. Not bad. We woke up this morning watching dolphins out our window. Yeah, a huge pot of dolphins, probably 30, 40 dolphins. Incredible. And it was super quiet here. We felt safe last night, so. Mm -hmm. I do want to say that it was a Thursday night and it was quiet. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the weekend's gonna be like and I don't want to stay here through the weekend. Like no. this was good for a emergency overnight, but. Yeah. So hopefully there's going to be availability opening up today at one of the RV parks. We talked with the owner and I think she's going to be able to find us a spot. She's going to squeeze us in. <laughs> oh man, this place is going to be super packed though. Yes, it's a very tight RV park, but we're right in the center of town, which makes exploring really easy. So I'm looking forward yeah, to that. Yeah, stoked on that because this looks like a really fun town to mess around in. It's super cute. I can't wait to show you around. Real quick, I want to take a second to talk about today's video sponsor, italki. So many of you have asked how we've learned Spanish and if we recommend learning Spanish before traveling to Mexico in a van or RV. Knowing even the most basic phrases will definitely improve your travel experience and it'll help you have a better understanding and appreciation of the culture. Italki allows you to take private language lessons from native speaking teachers from across the world. You can learn up to 150 languages and since our classes are one-on-one, -on -one, you can customize them to meet your needs and current skill level. For example, if you're planning to do van or RV life in Mexico in the future, you can customize your language class to practice common RV life things, like how to book campsites, find RV services, or order in a restaurant. I love that on italki I can search for teachers from different Spanish-speaking countries because the accents and the vocabulary they use will vary greatly depending on the country you're traveling to. We are traveling to Panama and Spain this year, and so I'm using italki to practice speaking and listening with their distinct accents. Geneva. Ginebra. 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 También significa otra cosa. Ginger. No, that's el es... jengibre. Okay. <laughs> muy bien, muy bien. Gin. Gin. Ah, Ginebra. Okay. Me sí. gustan los dos. La lugar, 
también <laughs> la bebida. Muy bien. There is no subscription required with italki. Each lesson is paid for individually, which is fantastic for our constantly changing schedule in RV life. The teachers set their own prices with lessons starting from $5, so it's a really affordable way to start practicing. When you're ready to start your language learning journey with italki, make sure to use the link in the video description below. And the first 50 people to use the code ESRV will get $5 off when they purchase $10 or more in credits for lessons with italki. Now let's go explore Loretto. Well, this is just lovely. <laughs> we made it to the main plaza. Plaza. I just used my Spain Spanish. Whoops. There's a coffee shop right in the corner, lots of restaurants. It's just like so charming. It almost feels like a little Europe. There's all these little tables outside for you to just enjoy breakfast or coffee. This spot came recommended by new friends that we met in Mulahave, and I was a little skeptical, but this is a pretty banging latte. <laughs> I'm not mad. There is a lot of gringos. I mean, I think we've said hello to like 20 people this morning and only one of those times have they said hola. It's crazy how many gringos are here, but this is the only Pueblo Mágico, I think in all of Mexico, that has an international airport. So it's a popular spot for people to come to visit because it's really accessible and charming. I haven't been in the city of an afternoon yet. We're already shopping. The mission was breakfast, but we passed some cute shops. When opportunity arises, yeah. you seize it. Well, the thing is, is I'm not, I'm not really getting on to you about it because I spotted this hat, which is what set off the shopping the, endeavor. The shopping, yeah, set off the shopping <laughs> alarm. Okay, let's go get breakfast. Yes, breakfast time. I am so ready for this. It looks so good. Dennis got the huevos divorciados and I got the huevos oaxaqueño, which has mole and has Oaxaca cheese. Mm -mm -mm. Mm. And a little tip for you guys. We ordered agua de la casa, which is water that they just get from a garrafon. So if you ever come to a restaurant and you don't want to pay for bottled water, we highly recommend not doing that. Just ask for agua de la casa. And also, ice here comes from an agua purificada, so it is not dangerous to drink ice or have ice in your margarita or whatever, whatever. you're drinking. Yeah. Cheers. Mm. Is it good? Mm -hmm. It no is way. so nice to have mole again. It's like my favorite. My favorite, favorite, favorite. So we've been hearing this kind of gnarly screw ripping out of a metal hole type sound as we've been driving lately. And I've been concerned that we may have damaged the overcap bunk when we went down that crazy washboard beach road getting to the whale tour. And my suspicions were correct. Screws are pulling out and backing out. I don't think it's structural, but what's happening is as the van cab flexes underneath of the overcap bunk, these screws are taking the brunt of the force and they're breaking. <laughs> This is part of full-time road life, dude. So, a little bit of Loctite, send them back in there. The damn thing is done. How does it feel to know that our front cab is not gonna fall off? Well, I was never concerned it was gonna fall off. Oh. Although, when it was shaking, it looked like it might. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> but no, I am actually super stoked that I noticed that so we could fix it before it actually became a real issue. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So yeah, I feel really good. To celebrate our win for all of the projects Dennis finished today, we're gonna go grab some beers at Loretto's only brewery. This pizza is very good. Pizza's hit or miss in Mexico sometimes, but this is very good. If you're craving like American food, I think this brew pub is the way to go. Look at this. Their beers are fantastic. Today we are going to be driving about an hour outside of Loreto to visit San Javier Mission. The drive out here is beautiful. I mean, absolutely fantastic. But there are some water crossings. There's natural springs all throughout this area. So there's water flowing constantly, even though we're in the middle of the desert. Some of those spots can be quite slippery, which is how we crashed. Oh, okay. We definitely crashed. You good? Yeah. Oh, I did it. Oh, are you okay? Oh! Hi! Did you hear your head? Yeah, I did. I'm okay? I'll be okay, yeah. I mean, my knee hit the ground, but I think I'm good. Yeah? Oh, yeah, you can see it's all Oh, right. yeah, look, it's swelling up. Oh, honey. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, it's, it's real big. This is so slippery. Come over, 
Gracias. Boom. So you can see on the side all the people slipping. So the key is to come in the center. Coming through here on two wheels, like definitely take it easy over these water crossings because you saw what just happened. I'm glad we're okay, but we are a little shooken up, that's for sure. That was scary. It's not fun crashing on a motorcycle for the first time. But we've made it, and it is beautiful here. I'm really glad we came. We're going to be showing you around the San Javier Mission, but to kind of decompress for what just happened, we're grabbing some lunch at one of the restaurants here. Ooh, this is fancy, dude. They, it they is fancy. fancy. We want a little comfort food. Yeah, this will definitely get the job done. <laughs> <laughs> He said there's a goat farm. The San Javier Mission was founded in 1699 by Jesuit missionaries in an effort to convert the local indigenous tribe, the Cochimi, to Christianity. Most missions in Baja were quickly abandoned due to lack of water and the inability to grow food in Baja's extreme climate. But San Javier Mission was one of the few to survive. Its constant supply of fresh water from a nearby spring allowed the Padres to successfully cultivate food. It is gorgeous the views all around, the building itself, they've reconstructed it really, really well. After the Spanish fled Mexico in 1768, the mission sat abandoned until the Mexican government restored it. Today, visitors can come to admire the Baroque architecture and beautiful frescoes, and even visit a 300-year-old olive tree that sits near the Spanish-built aqueduct and a natural spring. Aqueducts are cool. Yeah, it's pretty rad. Yeah, it's amazing that they were able to sustain life here temporarily because of this spring. But that's why the native peoples would have been here, is because they knew they had water source here that was reliable, right? Mm-hmm. It mostly looks like we're just eating in Loretto because we kind of are. <laughs> it's a little bit of a foodie town because they get so many travelers here. There's so many different restaurants to choose from. And you don't normally come out for desayunos, but Mexican desayuno breakfast is our favorite. We found this little place on the side of the street. It didn't have many reviews, and it's definitely visited frequently by the locals. It's called Mi Pequeña Poblanita. It's super easy to miss, but so far it has been our favorite spot we've eaten at. They specialize in foods that came from the region of Puebla, which is one of our favorite food scenes in all of Mexico. We got the chilaquiles con salsa verde, and I'm so excited. Try <laughs> to get every last bite. We told them how much we loved their mole. They brought us out an enmolada, which is kind of like a quesadilla. They fold it over and then they fill it with either like meat or cheese or vegetables and they smother it in this most incredible mole sauce and then put onion, crema, and a different type of cheese on top. It's so good. I think this one's chicken. <laughs> They're mole's to die for. Anything else we had for mole so far? It's a joke compared to this, and really. And Loretto. I highly encourage you as you're traveling throughout all of Mexico to find the spots that aren't necessarily on the strip or maybe highly reviewed by a lot of gringos that are visiting because I think you're gonna have a more authentic experience and it's definitely more economical. These were half the prices for every plate compared to the places on the strip. Doesn't mean the places on the strip are bad. It just is a different experience. Right. Loretto is the oldest pueblo in Baja, California. Inhabited by the Cochimi people for thousands of years, then later by Jesuit missionaries, the city served as the first capital of the Californias from 1697 to 1777. The town was named in honor of Our Lady of Loreto, the patron saint of the region, and the name of the historic mission in the center of town. It's so cool. Yeah. Make sure you come inside the Loreto Town Hall. At the very end, they have a room filled with these amazing murals so detailed. It's like a mixture of surrealist paintings, kind of like Salvador Dali-esque, but there's lots of like religious symbolism as well as native inspired or indigenous inspired art. You can tell there's meaning behind everything. They have all the different types of birds and animals that live here, past, new, it's super cool. The downtown is not only super cute, but very walkable. They have pedestrian only streets that are lined with a bunch of shops. Most of the stuff is like same from shop to shop. It's different backpacks, shirts, trinketries for you to take home as souvenirs. But I did find a really cute cover up dress that would be perfect for moving it further south and I think I'm gonna buy it. We've learned from our travels in Mexico, if you find something that you really like at a shop, buy it because it's hard to find the exact same piece from shop to shop. I can't tell you how many times we've thought, we'll see that again and we'll buy it next time and then we didn't. Think. It's super yummy. It's nice and savory or is it still sweet? It's still sweet. It has pineapple and orange in it. 
It has spirulina and celery and spinach as well. So it's a perfect balance there. It's not overly sweet. We don't like a lot of fruit in our smoothies. This is very yummy. And I was definitely craving something green. We love Mexican cuisine so, so much, but there's not a lot of vegetables in it. <laughs> so I think my body was ready for something a little detoxifying. healthier. Yeah, detoxifying. Oh, he's having a hard time. Oh my gosh. That is crazy. I don't even know how he got in there to begin with. The downtown RV park here is super, super small. And this guy somehow got in there with a triple axle yeah. trailer. I don't know how. He's like 32 foot. He's having a hard time getting out though. Mm -mm. Big rigs can come to Baja. There's, we've seen pretty much every type of RV possible on this trip, but yeah, it ain't get, for the faint of heart. If you got the grit, it's totally doable, but mm. that does not look comfortable to me. Mm -mm, mm -mm, no, mm -mm. that ain't us. It's is crazy. Ripping. I know. Which is a bummer because a big thing to do if you come to Loreto is to explore the surrounding islands. It's a UNESCO World Heritage Site and it is a national park out there. So that is a very popular activity. You can take kayak tours or boat tours. Coronado Island is the most popular. It's supposed to have absolutely breathtaking crystal clear blue beaches. You can also go snorkeling there and since it's undeveloped, it's supposed to have pristine wildlife for you to enjoy. It's definitely a bummer we don't get to do that this trip, but maybe in the future. I think it'd also be really, really cold for that activity right now. It's definitely a summer, spring, fall thing. It's a little chilly here, so. It's also fantastic for whale watching. They have several different species of whales pass through here. You can also see sea lions. We don't have a tour company to recommend. I know that the Malacone, they do have several different uh, lanchas or tour guides that you can just come up here and speak to about pricing. Also in the downtown area, right by the plaza, yeah, they yeah. had a lot of people pitching uh, Any of boat the tours. will be happy sell you something <laughs> as far as a tour goes. Loreto has been a lovely town. It's perfect for a little stopover as you continue to head south, but we are ready for warmer weather. This is, I've heard it only gets better as we continue south and I am ready for no jackets. <laughs> so further south, here we come. It is. Oh my Lord, it's so big. <laughs> That was embarrassing. I'm like drooling. 